right, this is my little 5 pole SSG based on a hard disk drive. I've placed a white strip down the center of each rotor pole magnet, which is for the, the strobe light. There's also a white strip on the top of the coil, which shows the center of the coil core. And when the magnets are directly above the coil core, which we call TDC, both stripes line up. The strobe light itself is just a, an LED, a white LED, red wire and a 330 ohm resistor going to the anode and a blue wire coming out the cathode. This is what the actual strobe looked like. You squeeze the wires together and place them in a, a ballpoint pen tube. And this is what you get when it's connected up and running. This is a high resolution still of the H waveform. We'll just go through this. This this point, this this is a zero volt line. And this point here is TDC, top dead center. This is when the magnet, the rotor magnet, is directly above the stator core of the coil. As the magnet approaches, voltage is induced up to TDC. After TDC, the voltage inverts, which is enough to switch the transistor on. And that's what this is here. This is what we call the coil charge, the leading edge spike, and the coil discharge. So as our magnet approaches the stator, voltage inverts, which is enough to make the base of the transistor switch on. We get our coil charge, the transistor switches off, we get the leading edge spike and the coil discharge and then the cycle starts again. Our lead strobe is connected to the circuit so that it lights on this coil charge. If we reverse the polarity of the lead it will light on the coil discharge which we don't want this particular exercise. So there's the H waveform, we'll carry on. Right, I'll just spin this up immediately you see three pulses per magnet pass. As the rotor accelerates it will drop to two and this is where you usually see a drop in current draw and then it'll go from two to one and you'll see another drop in current draw as the rotor accelerates. Incidentally the lead is connected with the red wire to powering battery positive and the blue wire to the collector of the transistor. This rotor will go up to around about 2500 RPM. Just into a single pulse you can see that the on point of the transistor is just beyond TDC. We'll adjust the base resistance now. You can see on the scope and on the rotor through the strobe light. I'll just slow it down with my finger. You can see the pulse width changing, but the on point isn't affected. Base resistance alters the time the transistor stays on, not the time the transistor switches on. to the second part of the experiment with the coil of a 12 volt relay in the trigger circuit. Already you can see we've not started off on triple pulsing, we've started up on double pulsing and that's soon going to a single pulse. Although the rotor's not accelerating as hard, as it does accelerate you can clearly see the on time is now moving further away from TDC. These magnets are only 13 millimeters wide, so 
the on point is actually on the trailing edge of the, of the magnet. Speed isn't as high as before because like I said the magnets are only small and we're already switching well past the magnet for TDC. If I increase base resistance the pulse width decreases and the on point moves closer to TDC. This is clearly seen on the rotor, it's not so clear on the scope so I'll, I'll just try and adjust that a bit so we can see a bit more of that wave. a little more I'll just expand that a bit further I think oops there we go just um, lock that down there we go now you can see the difference between, as the rotor crosses TDC in relation to the point the transistor actually switches on on the uh, waveform there's a clear difference and that's the, re the result of the inductance in the trigger circuit just go back down and I think that pretty much concludes the demonstration